Let's get those glasses high up in the sky. Cheers to you guys. It is Friday, and we are here to talk about final order cutoff for books this coming Monday night. So that can mean only one thing, and that is it's the last call. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. We do a lot of comic and pop culture related content on this channel. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. It is last call, and that means we are talking about 10 comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this Monday, January 20th at 10 p.m. Eastern. So the books that we talk about in this video, you want to make sure you get those orders in to your LCS or online before Monday night. So you guarantee those comics in your hand. And also by pre ordering, a lot of times you get those discounts, right, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. We're big advocates of using your LCS to make sure that you are putting in those orders at the earliest possible date so you can save money, so you can help the LCS also plan for their orders, and so you can guarantee yourself that you've got that book on New Comic Book Day, and it's not causing you to hit shop after shop doing the Wednesday Warrior thing, trying to find that book that got hot at the last second that you knew about in advance. That's right, Jack Attack, and the first book we're going to talk about tonight... <laughs> is alienated number one now this comes from boom studios and looking at the solicit it looks like a crossover or kind of mix of stranger things and then a little bit of paper girls but either way i'm really looking forward to this book boom studios they've been doing killing it with some of their stories right now but what do you think about this jack well yeah um you know boom studios has been on fire i will admit though that this one seems to have a little less heat than some of the previous boom releases Albeit not that Boom hasn't tried to drum up that kind of information. We've seen the same kind of press outlet uh, going for this release as we have some of the previous ones. But I think there's a little fatigue there in the market. But that's where Simon Spurrier comes in here because it's up to him to deliver. And I have full faith that he will do so, at least through the first issue. Right. And it looks like this is going to have three different covers for it. So you're going to have that cover A, cover B, and it looks like an FOC cover. The FOC cover is actually by McKelvey, and that cover B is by Bangle. But you know what, Boom Studios, always pay attention to the last second. They could add a one-per store. They could add a secret variant. They could do so much at the last second to add value to a new release. Boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> And speaking of Dynamite, this next book comes from Dynamite Publishing, and we're talking about Death to the Army of Darkness, number one. I'm a huge Bruce Campbell fan, love Evil Dead, love Army of Darkness, but this book looks to be fantastic. It's going to have four different covers for it. I actually like that Sebastian Perez variant, because it's kind of like an homage to that old Spider-Man annual cover that we all know. But either way, we get Army of Darkness, and a lot of times, I understand there's a lot of books out there for Army of Darkness, but still it holds true to my heart. Love me some Bruce Campbell. So I'm getting this on FOC. Well, I think the fact that there's a lot of Army of Darkness books, Brian, is why there's some validity to this as kind of a property. Uh, it's never been one that's really connected with me. Um, when I think about Dynamite Comics, I tend to think about those kind of like pinup characters that they're so well known for, whether it's Red Sonia or Vampirella or so on and so forth. Uh, Army of Darkness is a different feel, but like you mentioned, uh, they, there have been so many different series, so many spinoffs, miniseries, um, dating back years and years at this point. It is a proven commodity. It, there is a community who must be buying these books for them to be financially viable for Dynamite to continue to produce them. They've also done a number of crossovers, I know with like IDW and some other brands, so this is definitely a company that, uh, or a property that has a small cult following. Uh, and it, there's always a possibility, like you mentioned that variant cover, where if the community outside of that typical small community suddenly says, you know, I really want that Spider-Man homage, suddenly that book could catch some heat down the road. Now we're not guaranteeing it. It's just something that we notice and think is absolutely a possibility. And it's also worth noting that this series is written by Ryan Parrott, who's the writer of 
Power Rangers right now. Do, used, do, 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 do. Right, used to write Go Go Power Rangers, now writes the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series and has been the man behind Necessary Evil, the current storyline. It's gotten so much media attention. Yeah, writers are just whoring themselves out there all across all these properties. Gosh darn it. I'm kidding. That's another reason why I'm actually looking forward to reading this, but no doubt it's mostly Bruce Campbell and it's Army of Darkness. And let us know in the comments, are you a fan of Bruce Campbell? Because I know I'm not the only Bruce Campbell fan out there. The guy's just badass. Give me some sugar, baby. <laughs>
publishers like Valiant Comics have been doing it forever, right? That's that's the way they release stories. Dark Horse Comics is another one that does it like that. And it allows you to kind of go and go and go and go and go and go, yet always seem like you have something new to offer. So that's that's cool. And I think season two at least has a different feeling than volume two. Um, it, it doesn't feel like, well, we're just starting back over again. It seems like, no, 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 we're starting from where we were, but this is fresh and new. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. I think it, it kind of sets everything up it, all over again. It is truly a Green Lantern number one, even though it may really be a Green Lantern 13. But, you know, this is a good departure. If you if you, the Black Star story wasn't for you, you want to get back to some traditional uh, Green Lantern. This is going to be for you. There's also, for you hardcore Green Lantern fans who want a first appearance of everything, there's supposed to be a new Green Lantern lantern in this issue. So. You can be a lantern, a lantern, a lantern, lantern. It's so funny reading headlines that say new green lantern, lantern in <laughs> season two. It's going to be a survivor torch. Right. <laughs> also, this looks to be, um, season two looks to be 12 issues again. And there's three different covers for this. You have that regular Liam Sharp cover. There's a blank frame, but then there's also a Gerald Peril variant. Here we have Nebula number one from Marvel Comics. I kind of like this, and kind of reason why we have it on this FOC show is I did like that Thanos miniseries that kind of told that whole backstory of Thanos and Gamora. So here we seem to kind of get that one shot. Not, I won't say one shot. It's a five-issue series, I believe. We get that side story of Nebula that kind of goes along with that Thanos-Gamora type story. So it's going to be a five-issue miniseries. There's going to be five different covers for this, I believe, right now. You have the regular cover. There's a regular price variant. And then you also have your incentives, your 25, your one in 25, your one in 50, and one in 100. Yeah, so this one, um, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like you, Brian, like where there's, there's some mixed emotion about it. Uh, part of me says, you know, good for Nebula. Gamora got her <laughs> Get own. Get your series, girl. Right. right. <laughs> Gamora got a series. Nebula should get a series. At the same point, Gamora series was essentially, you know, I don't, did anybody read that? Do you know anybody who was like invested in it um, from a, like when I say invest, I mean emotionally invested. The only thing that that series is remembered for is the Matina variant. So I use that comparison to say that that's what I think that this series is going to be all about. Um, there will be some people who will read it, some people who will enjoy it. And, and you, you never know. I could be wrong. It's funny how sometimes series come out of left field. But you talked about the number of variants for this one. There's some quality names attached to some of these variants. Jen Bartell is doing the cover A. Um, there's a hidden gem variant, which the hidden gem variants have performed extremely well. Yeah, I think that's Ron Lim doing that. Yeah, so – I. I haven't heard any store variant announcements for Nebula. I don't expect to hear any store variant announcements for Nebula. We're at the lead up for FOC, so it's now or never. And without that, some of these higher ratio Nebula variants may not be bad as far as short term plays. But even if number one still receives a higher order be on the lookout for issues two three four some of those later issues when the print run will start to drop down to my guess would be almost nothing and if they still do 125 150 incentives those could be some solid pickups especially if they pick the right artists yeah scotty young's doing a variant do you think it's going to be a baby variant i would guess yes it's going to be a nebula baby variant I, if I were to pick my favorite cover, I do like the cover A, but if I was going to pick an incentive, I actually like the one in 50, and it's by Mirka Andolfo, who is one of the stars on the rise with some of her art. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the ones I could see uh, being kind of sneaky. Sticking with Marvel, we get Thor number three. Now here it looks like Thor's taking on Beta Ray Bill, which we just talked about in the three up three down being hot. And it also looks like it's Mjolnir versus Stormbreaker. That's what the solicit is telling us. You have three different covers for it. You have the regular cover by Olivier Corporal. But I also like that there's a one in 25 incentive variant for this by Ryan Brown. It's an artist we've talked about on this channel. Another one that has that star on the rise and has some fantastic cover art, especially with some of those exclusive variants. 
But tell us more about Thor number three, Jack. To be honest with you, Brian, no, I'm not going to because you don't really need to know anything <laughs> else. All you need to know is what you said. We're going Better Ray Bill versus Thor. This is Donny Cates. Um, Better Ray Bill, we talked about how popular that character is. Uh, er, Thor fans get excited when he enters an issue. We're getting kind of a head-to-head, mano-a-mano with those two. You know they're going to end up teaming up in the end, but we're getting it Donny Cates style. And I still have to ask the question, Brian, what issue is going to be the big issue? And it's funny because it's happened with every ongoing that he's done. There's been an issue where he's introduced something, he's changed the game, and I just got to believe that's coming with this Thor series. You got to be ready for it. It's going to be some random issue, and uh, you never, never, never know. So this one is an absolute must-pull. Uh even if it's not something you want to buy into in advance that you got to read, you got to check out and you got to see if you got to react to. Right. Love Donny Cates, love Donny Cates writing. But if you follow him on Twitter, talking about what issue is that issue, it's always the next issue. Everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's how you sell comics, baby. Then from Image, we get an ongoing series with Tataris, or Tartar Us, or Tataris number one. This is being described as Breaking Bad set in Mos Eisley, but either way, I kind of like this, but at the same time, just talking to Jack, it's like, this kind of seems like every other Image number one that's been coming out recently, Jack. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to get on board for some of these uh, kind of constant slew of attempts to kind of break in with this like sci-fi type cosmic storyline. And you know what it really doesn't sell me is it's like this mixed with this. That really just doesn't work. Um, Everything is something mixed with something. It's something set with this. It's always a comparison. uh, And it's always a comparison that's tough to live up to. Having said that, I'm going to give you the positive about this one, Brian. The writer is a New York Times bestselling writer who wrote Alien 3. The artist is Jack T. Cole, who is the artist behind the recently Netflix optioned The Unsound from Boom Studios that he did with uh, Colin Bunn. Um, So you have some people here who have some experience, uh, have made some successful projects. Anything's possible, but I will say, uh, for the most part, we try to give every publisher a little bit of love. This might just be a little image love, because it seems like it's an image number one every week, and it it seems like a lot of them over the last couple of years have kind of come and gone. Right. There is a cover A and then there's cover B who's by the writer itself, Johnny Christmas. And you are getting your money's worth at least because this is going to be like a 44 page kickoff issue. Yeah. It's worth checking out for issue number one. Definitely. Here's another book. It's been a fan favorite, especially of Jack and I, as we've really been getting into the storyline. But we have Star Wars Rise of Kylo Ren number three. It's got that beautiful cover. A. Everyone loves Clayton Crane. There is a one in 25 incentive for this as well. But tell us more about this one, Jack. Well, Brian, you know, people have been loving this storyline from a reader buzz standpoint. They, this series is giving us exactly what we've been asking for. We want more information on Kylo Ren. We want more information on Snoke. That fervor only deepens with the the uh, final installment of the current Star Wars trilogy. And this series has been giving it to us. But as much as us readers of the series have been excited, you know who's been excited too, Brian? Those Wednesday Warrior Flippers. Because these books have been turning a profit. The cover A for number one went to $20. Number two went to $15. So my question is, when does it stop, Brian? Is number three the issue? Because it it always hits a wall. Is number three the issue that retailers go, man, I need need some of those Kylo Ren comics. And they put in a huge order and it's just readily available on Wednesday. Or are we still going to get those kind of mentality driven LCS owners who are like, you know what? Star Wars comics will never sell. I'm not, I'm not buying it. Um, or I'm just ordering for my pull list. What do you think is going to happen on Wednesday, Brian? Well, first of all, 
I didn't know the local comic book stores were like country pirates. <laughs> gar, gar, <laughs> get, get, get me some Kylo Ren. Hey, come down to South Carolina. They are country pirates down here. <laughs> it's hard to tell. I think you're right. I think this might be the issue for those type people. Um, either way, I think the storyline's good. Um, it's talking about, you know, Kylo's, he's now with the Knights of Ren. He's, I always love backstory that delves deeper into the movies that you're used to. And that's kind of what got me to read these. I, I'm fully admit, I'm not the big Star Wars fanboy that has read all these Star Wars comics. I've kind of fallen off some of them. The ones I tend to read are the Darth Vader ones. And then I've been reading the crap out of this Rise of uh, Kylo Ren. And I've been loving it. So I think, yeah, it's going to be at some point, And when it does, you hear a lot of people talk about, oh, yeah, that's booty. It's not even going for that much. Sometimes it's not about what it's going for. Sometimes it's what about what is in between the pages of those books. Yeah. No, I think it's going to hit the wall at some point. I think issue three is probably that point. Um, it could, if it, it still goes over cover for those resellers who watch us, I would only expect like eight to 10 because you see, you saw the decline from 20 to 15. I think you'll see the decline. And number two had a first appearance, right? So you had the first appearance of the Knights of Ren. Yeah. Um, so there's even more credence in that. But you know what? I'm going to make one more comment before we move on to the next book. This is the stuff that drives me nuts about first appearances in comics. The first appearance of the Knights of Ren goes for like four or five times what the first appearance of Kylo Ren himself goes for. Something is wrong with that. Here we are talking about Spirits of Ghost Rider, Mother of Demons number one going to have this regular cover there's also a regular price stephanie hans variant which i'm loving and there's also looks to be a one in ten cuter design variant yeah and i'm going to tell you brian i would be paying attention to these one shots that are going to be coming out in relation to ghost rider there's going to be a number of them and they're really looking to not build out the world like we talk about because that world's already been built but what they're looking to do is expose a new audience to characters and give them a backstory and a deeper appreciation for characters they may not be aware of um, who are part of Ghost Rider's kind of immediate universe. And to me, you know what that tells me, Brian? Something's going on with Ghost Rider. I really believe that Marvel has plans from a multimedia standpoint with Ghost Rider, whether it's MCU, whether it's television show, what, whatever form or facet it's going to be they've put it out there that they're going to be putting out a number of one shots and they said why that they want to get people you know like i said accustomed to knowing all of these characters so i would pay attention to these characters i think it gives validity to each of these characters um we also know that lilith got popular around the t talk of all the different ghost rider stuff that was supposed to be happening at hulu because i think she was supposed to be a part of that show she may still be and it's also important to note for you back issue collectors who like to make your back issue decisions based on what we talk about on FOC, what we're talking about on the Bolo show. Um, this Lilith is not the Dracula Lilith. So you're not going back to the 70s. You're talking the Lilith who first appears in volume two of Ghost Rider number 28. Of course, that Spirit of Vengeance issue. This is, a, this is from the Spirit of Vengeance era of Ghost Rider. And, uh, you know, I agree with you. I think that the, the, the Hans variant is the best looking variant, but I've got my eye on that incentive. I don't think a lot of these are going to be ordered by stores, Brian. Yeah. And if you want to make it, especially a really good show, they need to reach out. I think Warner brothers owns it, but if you're going to bring Lilith in there, God, man, they seen some, we need some Sam and Dean Winchester in there. I'm telling you, get them Winchester boys and them country pirates. Yeehaw. And <laughs> have us a supernatural ghost rider crossover. What are you going to do when Supernatural's over? You're going to be devastated. It's going to live on forever on Netflix. <laughs> and the last book we're going to talk about tonight is Gwen Stacy number one. This comes from Marvel. Everyone's familiar with Gwen Stacy. Everyone's familiar with all the great covers that we've seen from Gwen Stacy before, but this number one issue is actually going to have a bunch of great covers from a bunch of great artists. That's probably about the biggest praise I can give about this book because I personally am not feeling the storyline with Gwen Stacy, but I also realize probably not the demographic that it's marketed for, but either way, it's a bunch of different covers 
One thing I do like about this one is that Ji Hyung Lee variant and one that has the trade dress, but then they also have that one in 200 incentive virgin. We talked about how we don't like trade dress and virgin, but Ji Hyung Lee usually gets a pass right now because some of that art he's been doing is pretty freaking amazing, but my wife didn't like the cover. She thought it looked like the Sims game. Really? <laughs> I was like, the cover's been pretty well loved. You want to talk about buzz. We talk about variant buzz. We talk about reader buzz right here on the channel. Weekly, um, this book has some serious buzz. The regular cover, which also is the one you're talking about that has that incentive. It, it, you're talking about a cover that I've seen posted dozens and dozens and dozens of times. So you will meet a person who doesn't like that art style. But regardless of how you feel about it, um, it seems like the overwhelming majority really, really, really like it now my initial reaction is to kind of almost shit on this book and say uh it's really just a book made for the covers right so we can have a j scott campbell gwen cover and we know that that's a classic um we can go to an adam hughes or we can go to a you know they can do things like that every issue and retailers will buy up copies of the book regardless you talk about what's in the inside regardless of what's on the inside just for what's on the outside we call those superficial purchases and uh, they're going to be grabbing up those looking for those variants uh and that's my initial take right where i will pause and hesitate is i had a similar take when they were doing the black cat series and recently i had some of you from simpleman's comics family tell me you need to be reading the black cat series and i did I got to admit, it's kind of great. It's a, it's a cool caper story. So I'm trying not to judge a book by its cover. My initial reaction to the solicit and the pitch of, you know, a telling of a story of Gwen beyond just the death and beyond just uh, being Spider-Man's girlfriend. I sit there and go, then you're just a regular girl. You're in the story. Um, being Spider-Gwen is what made you super special. Um, you know, to me, this is like doing a J. Jonah Jameson series or something like that. It's just, it's not, it doesn't really feel necessary. I'm actually more excited to read about his origin. It would, it probably would be a better book. You could do a, a bomb ass J. Jonah Jameson book, but Gwen Stacy, I feel like is for the covers. Um, again, having said that, I will say I was wrong with black cat. So you do never know, but um, I'll check it out, but I'm, I'm very skeptical. Right. And I will say, if you are looking for the incentives for this or the incentives for a lot of the books that we talked about here, make sure you check out sponsors of our channel, especially frankiescomics.com as yes. well as slabbedheroes.com. And with that being said, those are our 10 picks. But like we always do, we're going to tell you about those additional printings that are coming out this final order cutoff as well. That's right, Brian. We've got another installment of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers TMNT number one with the do, 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 third do, do, do. print. Also, Star Trek Picard. Are you guys paying attention to how hot that series is from IDW? Number two is going to a second print. Magnificent Miss Marvel number 11 going to a second print, continuing that Storm Ranger cover run that they started with eight. Um, and then we've got Ruins of Ravencraft Carnage number one. Sold out all those Ravencroft series are doing well. And finally, Star Wars Rise of Kylo Ren. Number two, the second print. We talked about how First Knights of Ren sold out. Tough book to get. Going to a second print. Also, he mentioned uh, the Star Trek Picard. If, if you are a Star Trek fan and you love Next Generation or uh, the Picard series that's coming up, check out a friend of the channel, Michael Carls. He's got Downright yes. Nerdy Podcast. Check out his podcast. Check out his YouTube channel. He's had other YouTube friends. They've gone on and they've been doing all types of reviews leading up to that Picard series. So if you're a Star Trek fan, definitely check out Downright Nerdy Podcast and check out some of those videos. Me, personally, I'm more Star Wars than Star Trek, but if you are a Star Trek fan, I highly recommend you check it out because a group of guys are always talking about the books, talking about um, Star Trek, and it doesn't appeal to me as much. I still watch it because I enjoy Downright Nerdy Podcast, and i kind of been tempted to go back and watch some of those movies. But either way, definitely check out Downright Nerdy Podcast for some good Star Trek info. So there it is, guys. Those are our 10 picks as well as the additional printings. Again, if you want to see the full final order cutoff list, we're talking about all the books. We're talking about comic books. We're talking about graphic novels. We're talking about trade paperbacks. 
talking about toys, there's cards on there. Make sure you head over to simplemanscomics.com and we'll have the full FOC list up there for you to check out. And with that being said, we do have some more content coming up. We've talked about Morbius, back issues to look out for on Morbius. We'll be on this channel very soon. So if you're not subscribed already, make sure you do and click that bell notification. So that way you get notified whenever future videos drop. Jack, anything left? Uh, oh, give me them go go spider glands. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the, I'll I'll take the spider glands. You take the Gwen Stacy's. <laughs> this is Brian Jackson, Simpson's Comics, and we'll see you guys in the next video.